You know, seeing the results of my DEXA earlier has really given me a nudge along when it comes to me thinking about my muscle mass because if I look into the future, what I'd really like to do is preserve that as much as possible. I've always thought of the weight section of the gym as mostly being for those big, burly bodybuilding types and not for me. I'm going to have to change that attitude. I know in theory how to build muscle, but what I need is some practical tips to get started. Hey, Ross. Hey, how hey, are you? Hey, Caroline, hi. Pleasure to meet you. Ross Smith is charged with giving elite athletes across all sports the strength and power they need to get their job done. I'm going to be very different from the person that you normally work with. <laughs> End of the day, you'd like to build an athlete to have the physical qualities they need to perform at the highest levels. Mm. It's the same with you. You want to build the physical qualities you need so you have no limitations to do what you want to do in your daily environment. So for, for an older person like me, that could be as simple as getting out of a chair or climbing a flight of stairs. Absolutely. Yeah. So avoid falling over, avoid injuries. The goal Ross has for his athletes is not the strength or size of their muscles, but the function that they need. Stand up with it <clears throat> and take one step backwards. So even that's heavy. Yep. Don't have to walk around them. <laughs> so from there, I don't care the range. I want you to feel balanced and controlled through your feet. OK, so just going down to... Yep and squeeze back up again. Lovely. Okay. So again, sit onto the chair, which is a very common thing, and push up. Okay. Again, when you think about squeezing your glutes nice and tight so your yep. knees don't roll out. I know that my glutes aren't yep. that strong, really. Rather than isolating one muscle, Ross wants me training all my muscles to work together, which he says builds functional strength, not just bulging biceps. Rest. Like and then just put it there. Have a rest. <laughs> so already, is that a bad sign? Probably is. <laughs> when we overload our muscles, they start to adapt. Microscopic damage to the surface of the muscle fibres kicks off inflammation and repair, and that grows the size and strength of the muscle. In addition, the neural pathways that trigger our muscle fibres learn to better coordinate but we have to keep increasing our targets. If you do the same thing again and again and again, the body gets very good doing that. So you need to keep challenging it in different ways to overload it. In addition to strong muscles, Ross says that our ability to generate explosive power, how we absorb force when we land. Okay. And this is good research to show this is really good for bone health and how we use our muscles together in practical movement patterns all play a role in healthy function. Now, you don't have to love the gym. Body weight exercises like squats, push-ups and yoga will do the job. Oh, yeah. But you do have to overload, which means either a difficult movement, a challenging weight or speed, or just repeating until failure. These principles can help anyone build the ability and muscle we all need to stay healthy. And for me, that means I get to keep doing the things I love as I get older. Oh, my goodness me. God, I'm going to be sore. I am going to be sore. I can feel it. Oh. Working those muscles comes at a price. <laughs> How are you feeling? Yeah, not too bad. I'm, it was pretty intense, but I think I'm going to feel sore tomorrow. Yeah, 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 I can relate to that. I'm feeling pretty sore on my shoulders. Yeah. We're both aching, so we want to know what these guys do to get rid of the pain and get back on the track. We've all seen athletes get into a hot tub after training. Or an ice bath. So which should we be using? Nice. Wow. Wow. It's like a resort. It is. <laughs> Barry Horgan's been studying these volleyballers to find out what temperature works best for athlete recovery and how that temperature affects their muscles. So, are, are we ready? Yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah, cool. Okay, so who's gonna get into the hot or the cold? 
Well, I, I think I prefer hot. I prefer hot. <laughs> you prefer hot? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, how about we toss a coin? Okay. All right, let's lift each okay. side. Okay. All right. Well, it's not a double-sided coin, is no. it? No. So okay. we have that. Uh, heads and tails. Tails? Yep. Heads. Okay. Heads. Okay. Oh, heads wins. Oh, no. Sorry, Carla. <laughs> if you want to go down the stairs and, yep. and then uh, sit uh, to shoulder deck. Okay. Yeah, shoulder yeah. deck. Shoulder deck. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you're a lucky man. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. It's actually really long. Oh. oh. It's a bit too warm for my legs. Hey boys, how are you going? While many athletes swear by cold and hot water recovery, huh? the science is lagging behind their conviction. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god, that is so cold. <laughs> Seriously, I'm freezing here. Oh, this is just awful. <laughs> this is just bloody awful. Oh my god. I'm completely numb. I don't think I'll be able to breathe in a minute. All of my skin is stinging, it's so cold. It's just freezing. Imagine just one huge ice cube being around your body, and that's what it feels like. So how long have you been in? About five minutes now. Okay, do you think it works for you? You definitely feel better afterwards, yeah. Really? Yeah. And how often do you do it? After long training sessions. Most weeks? Yeah, a couple times. Oh my goodness. One thing is clear. At 38 degrees, blood vessels near the skin expand allowing increased blood flow. It's all right for you. And the theory is that this helps with removal of the waste products that build up in the muscles after exercise. I can't even feel my fingers. It's not very pleasant. I hope it's good for me. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh. Oh, what a relief. I don't have to, but I'm curious to see what the cold pool is like after the warm. Caroline's reaction is a little bit uh, scary. Ooh. What do you reckon now? <laughs> it's really icy, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I love this hot. Oh, oh. Farah. Everything in your body is saying stop. All your muscle and skin is contracting. I can't, I can't do it. Can I get out now? In the cold water, at around 15 degrees, the capillaries constrict, and that may force blood to the central organs where it's filtered. What is clear is that athletes spend up to 15 minutes in what seems to me an unbearable cold. But apparently, there is a more practical alternative. Is there an equivalent that you could do at home? Yes, what you could commonly do if at home is alternate hot and cold showers, which helps with closing the blood vessels and, and reopening them, creating that pump-like effect, which helps mm. improve blood circulation around the body. It's called a contrast shower, and Barry says alternating one minute of hot and one minute of cold just five times, 10 minutes in total, is all you need. Barry's study has also shown something rather surprising. It seems that hot water recovery might be better than cold if you're doing heavy weight sessions on consecutive days. Well, I might take some of those tips home with me. Look, I think they're fantastic. That's a, mm -hmm. that, they're really good suggestions. I don't know whether I could do the cold shower thing at home, home though. I used to do cold showers. Did you? I stopped, yeah, but maybe I'll start them up again. <laughs> yeah. If I actually get around to doing enough exercise. <laughs> <laughs>